Today we're going to look at an overview of the read aloud question type in the PTE academic exam. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. In this video, we'll look at an example of a read aloud question, tell you about scoring, and give you some important tips to help you earn all the points available. Let's get started. First, we'll look at an overview of this question type. This is the first task in the speaking section. The entire speaking section usually takes up around 30 to 35 minutes of the exam. You'll have six or seven read aloud questions. When you look at the question, you'll see a paragraph that typically has up to 60 words. Depending on the length of the paragraph, you'll have anywhere from 30 to 40 seconds to rehearse. This means that you'll have time to silently prepare and get ready to read the text aloud. Then you'll have the same time, 30 to 40 seconds, to record the same text into the microphone. Let's look at an example. First, you would hear a beep that means your rehearsal time is starting. On test day, you'll have a more exact preparation and speaking time, but for now, just use this general range. Here's a sample of the kind of text you'll see. Give it a try. Pause the video now and give yourself 40 seconds to prepare. When you're finished, we'll move on. Ready to move on? After this, you'll hear another beep, which means you should begin speaking and that your answer is being recorded. Pause the video again for another 40 seconds and practice reading the selection out loud. How do you think you did? This seems pretty straightforward, but there are a lot of things to watch out for, especially when it comes to scoring. Let's talk about how you're scored for the read aloud questions. Since you're both reading and speaking, the scoring is considered integrated. That means it contributes to both your reading and your speaking scores. And since there isn't exactly one right or wrong answer, the scoring is considered partial credit. Most of the questions on the exam are partial credit, which just means that you can lose some marks depending on how you answer. We'll look at that in just a bit. Now that you know a little about what kind of scores these are, let's talk about what your score is actually based on. PTE looks at three things, content, pronunciation, and oral fluency. Your content score depends on length, and your pronunciation and oral fluency are scored on a scale of zero to five. Let's look at these three things in more detail. The first scoring criteria is pronunciation. When you're preparing for pronunciation, focus on how you place stress on words and how you pronounce your vowels and consonants. Be sure and watch out for words that have two or more consonants in a row. They can be tricky. Here's a scale of how you were scored on pronunciation and its reference. Basically, this depends on how easily a native English speaker could understand what you're saying. Let's look at an example. A recent survey of staff found that 90% welcomed having clothing which reflected the corporate identity. Your pronunciation score would depend on your word stress and how you pronounce the vowels and consonants. So you would lose marks if you said, a recent survey found that 90, instead of placing the stress correctly, a recent survey found that 90, confronting these tricky situations is something we'll cover in our more detailed example video. You can find a link to that video in the description below. The second scoring criteria, oral fluency, is very similar to pronunciation. But oral fluency is more about the rhythm of your speech, the pauses you use, emphasis on words, and connected speech. Essentially, this means there should be no pauses, repetitions, or hesitations. The scoring rubric for oral fluency is pretty similar to pronunciation, but you'll notice that disfluent and limited are included here. 
If you add unnecessary pauses, you would lose marks, and you'll want to pay special attention to the stress you place on certain words. Let's take another look at a sentence from our example. Corporate clothing does have potential for future growth. The fact that does is included in this sentence means that it should be emphasized in your speech. Remember that usually we don't use does as a helping verb unless we have a negative sentence or we're asking a question with a verb other than to be. In this sentence, we're using does to emphasize the positive nature of this sentence. We'll show you more tips and tricks in our examples video. Now, criteria three, content, is scored a little differently because it's not based on a scale. Instead, each replacement, omission, or insertion of a word counts as one error. So this basically means that you don't want to change the text as you see it. For example, you wouldn't want to say, corporate clothing um, does have the potential for their growth. Notice how I added the and omitted for. These would count as mistakes. Let me read the entire example once for you. It will help you if you repeat what I say, mimic my intonation, stress patterns, and pauses. Corporate clothing does have potential for further growth. Some banks have yet to introduce a full corporate look. Police forces are researching a completely new look for the 21st century, and many employees now welcome a company wardrobe. A recent survey of staff found that 90% welcomed having clothing which reflected the corporate identity. Now let's go over some important tips that you should remember on test day. First, it's very important that you place the microphone in a way that makes it easy to record your voice. Once you hear the beep, start speaking immediately. Be confident and don't waste any of your speaking time. And as soon as you're finished, make sure you press the next button. Make sure to finish speaking within the given time and always keep in mind that the recorder stops if you pause longer than three seconds. I hope this has given you a general idea of what to expect for the PTE read aloud question type. Be sure to visit our website at edubenchmark.com and you'll find a free practice test you can take. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell notification so you don't miss a single video. And be sure to leave a comment below so we can know better how to help you. If you'd like to practice more PTE questions and learn more about the exam, check out our website at edubenchmark.com. Also, try our PTE speaking mock test and our PTE writing correction service. For more information on the read aloud question, watch our more in-depth videos and learn helpful do's and don'ts, and take one of our PTE preparation courses. You'll find all the links in the description below. I'm glad you joined me today and I'll see you again soon.